in and out, so please be patient. And grace be unto you in peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's gospel, the disciples are at a crossroads with Jesus in their midst. They are at the intersection of economic trade, religion, and power of the empire in Caesarea Philippi, a place where Herod's son had established his center of government. But by the time the gospel was written, this same spot had been utilized as a celebration place for the defeat of Jerusalem. So too are the disciples at a crossroad in their journey with Jesus to the cross. Jesus continues to prepare his disciples for their mission and asks who the people believe the Son of Man is. To which they hemmed and they hawed and with the usual answers of prophet, Elijah, John the Baptist, great people of the past. But Jesus pins them down and wants to know and questions them specifically as to who they believed he was. Jesus wants to know about your heart. What do you say that he is? Jesus wants to know what you believe and wants to hear the workings of the Spirit in you proclaimed out loud. He's also questioning the disciples' allegiance at this crossroad. What or in whom will his followers place their trust? This place of wealth and opportunity with access to special privileges, the latest idols and or potential security blankets, or the safety net of the status quo? Or will they choose wisely and trust in the one whose life, death, and resurrection reveal the mercy and justice of the living God? Peter responds quickly and says that he is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God fairly good answer, and I pray that it is one in your heart as well. But what does that really mean to us? When Peter said, you are the Christ, he's going a step further. Israel had for many years been looking for God to send a Savior, someone like King David of old who led Israel to greatness. Israel was looking for God to send a Messiah to do that again, to save Israel from oppressors such as Rome, who ruled during Jesus' time. The disciples had been expecting someone who was going to be a fierce warrior, someone to overthrow the ruling parties and to take the place of those who had oppressed them for years. You are the Christ. Peter says, you are the Savior for whom we have waited for centuries. You are the one sent from God to save us. The answer Peter gives is one for us all to embrace, but it also one that gives the disciples clarity, for they were not fully aware or on the same page of who Jesus was. Peter has just revealed to the disciples that God has not sent a soldier, per se. God has sent them the embodiment of love in their lives, an anointed one who has come among them to fulfill a special role in their lives and the lives of everyone in the world. Jesus has come among them to restore a right relationship with God who we are to embrace and emulate in our lives. For us, we need to understand who Jesus is in our hearts before the reality of Jesus becomes our life. In this dialogue, it's okay for the people to believe what they want about Jesus, but it is important for us as disciples to not be wishy-washy about our faith. 
We have heard Jesus' teachings and his stories about his miracles. So how we answer this question is critical to our witness in the world. Ours is a faith of believing in Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus is the one who will bring us salvation from death and continue to build his church on the rock. Us, those of us who profess our faith in him, are that rock. A part of our growing faith formation is our growing awareness and deepening understanding of who God is and what that means for us, for our faith community, and for the world. Peter is learning and sharing that faith out loud and inviting us to join him. So where in this community are you sharing your faith out loud? Taking from one of my daily devotions, a quote, as children of God, we have a choice to follow his word and build our foundation on something sturdy. While it may be hard to know exactly how we do that, the answer is so simple. It's just about actively being connected to God daily. Ensuring we surround ourselves with his word by reading the Bible and praying at every chance we get. It's about seeking him rather than those things or voices of the world. It's inevitable that we will experience hard times, a, a loss of self or a loss of what we're rooted in. But Jesus is the one who can make our foundation in life sturdy. He is our rock and the only thing that we can successfully build our life on. Peter, the rock in today's gospel, will be that same Peter who denies even knowing Jesus on the night of his arrest. Fear will have overtaken and overshadowed Peter's faith. Yet even knowing what was to come, Jesus blessed Peter and promised to build the church on this unreliable human, this saint and sinner, this person like you and I. The great news is that Jesus promises, promises us that the church, based on him, will continue no matter how our leaders falter. No matter how our, much our efforts fall, this church of God will not. And this fits right in with the events of today where we are struggling to make the connections with our congregations due to separation. We are divided over how to safely come back together to be the assembly of Christ, even though we are called to be the assembly outside of these four walls. We won't go back, we won't be able to go back to the way it used to be because life has changed and forced us to look at church from a whole new perspective. We are encouraged to hear the great news Peter has shared with us. Jesus is the Christ, the one who has come to be with us and deliver us from all that troubles us. And our faith in Jesus gives us the power to overcome the gates of hell that have pervaded our lives and empowers a greater understanding of how God's love sustains all of creation. Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, is our foundational rock. We've had this foundation in our lives from the dawn of time. And as any builder knows, we have the firmest foundation in which to build our church in new and exciting ways. I dislike the term reinvent. I would prefer we build on a rebirth of our faith to move us forward in these challenging times. We are challenged by Jesus to come together and witness to the power of God's love in everything that we do. But that does not stop at the doors of our church where we find so much comfort. We are reminded that the false idols of wealth, power, and empty faith 
are not what is required to drive us in our duties as disciples of Christ. God has given us the gift of Jesus to serve as a role model, guiding us on our own journey to the cross and for us to embody in our community. The disciples viewed Jesus in the past as Elijah, Jeremiah, or John the Baptist. We are called to witness to Peter's revelation of God working us through the presence of Christ here and now. Jesus has given us authority and anointed us to live out his ideal for the future of our solid foundation. Be Christ's rock and live as the disciple Christ yearns for you to be. Join me today in shouting out that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God.